The year 2023 is almost over, and it was a big one. It was the year I was born, for starters. But what did we learn about where we're headed? Let's ask some humans. We'll start with the real Parmi Olsen and the year of AI. AI burst into the public consciousness. Remember when suddenly everybody could get answers to any question in beautifully human prose? Or when Midjourney allowed us to conjure any image we could think of? Tech firms jumped into an arms race this year to launch their own products that use so-called generative AI. Before, artificial intelligence tools were mostly used to analyze information. Now, generative AI could produce content, often as well as a human could. That suddenly became a threat to artists everywhere, and they were fighting back in court and in the streets. Researchers also warned that these models could perpetuate gender and racial stereotypes because of their biased training data. It didn't help that firms like OpenAI were becoming more secretive about how their models worked. OpenAI looked even more suspect in November when its board fired CEO Sam Altman for not being candid with them. One thing I'm concerned about, companies like Microsoft and Google have rushed ahead to plug generative AI into the software they're selling, creating new assistants that can write documents and computer code. Sure, it'll save hours of time, but this unregulated, untested technology could also kill a lot of jobs and even worsen prejudices. Elon Musk endorsed anti-Semitic content. When 2023 started, some people thought Elon Musk might be able to rejuvenate Twitter. Instead, he hobbled it so badly, I don't know what it will look like in a year. Advertisers have fled, brands have fled, users have fled, and I fled earlier this year when I felt it was morally wrong to be posting on the platform due to the way in which monetization was incentivizing abhorrent behavior. In short, the chaotic changes Musk has brought into Twitter, which he nonsensically renamed in July to X, have done nothing but make the platform worse. And despite claiming to be a champion of free speech, Musk has sued organizations that dare to call out objectionable behavior. Musk can't seem to help himself from saying things that drive advertisers away. Go f yourself. And there's little evidence that his plan for an everything app is coming to fruition. Thanks to Musk's buyout, the company is also riddled with billions of dollars in debt that he needs to make payments on. Users will continue to migrate to alternatives such as Meta's threads. And of course, most young people today would rather use TikTok or Instagram. China's whole economic model is being upturned. When 2023 started, Xi Jinping had COVID to blame for China's slump. And that slump will continue well into the new year, unless he starts blaming his own policies and changing them. Back then, China's economy was slowing, having just seen one of the worst growth rates on record. The US accused Beijing of flying spy balloons over America, and Asian countries like the Philippines that had typically stayed silent in the face of Chinese incursions in the South China Sea, they were starting to stand up for themselves. In the autumn came the abrupt and sinister disappearances and subsequent dismissals of senior officials in Xi's cabinet. His foreign minister and defense minister were unceremoniously replaced, sparking fears of at best incompetency and at worst chaos deep inside his corridors of power. Then, more bad news, this time in the form of slowing foreign investment in China. Data showed that a key gauge of FDI turned negative for the first time ever this November, as companies spooked by geopolitical tensions between Beijing and Washington reevaluated whether staying in China was really worth it. No coincidence, perhaps, that this was the same month she headed to San Francisco for a meeting with President Joe Biden? It was a different she on display than we're used to seeing, far friendlier than he usually is, talking up US-China ties. But I would take that about face at, well, face value. There's been no dramatic change in the way China interacts with the world. It's still flying warplanes across the Taiwan Straits. It's still erecting floating structures in the South China Sea. Pressures on the Chinese economy will remain next year. The property sector is stumbling and young people there are feeling the loss of opportunities and the lack of jobs. In January, the Taiwan elections, where politicians will debate the merits of getting closer or further away from the mainland. Xi has his work cut out for him in 2024.
Doctors say the hype has increased demand for Ozempic prescriptions. This was the year that Ozempic curiosity turned into Ozempic cash. But there are still so many questions. Can Ozempic and other drugs help people lose more than 20% of their body weight? Sure looks like it. Does losing weight always translate into better health? And maybe most pressingly for consumers right now, how can we afford them? Even before we get to answers, business is absolutely booming. So strong that some analysts are predicting the annual obesity drug sales could eventually reach $100 billion. At one point this year, the market cap of Novo Nordisk, which makes Ozempic and Wegovy, was bigger than the GDP of its home country of Denmark. We should also have better data on how long people stay on these drugs, giving us a better idea of how realistic it is to take them for life. That will in turn give a better sense of how much they might actually cost the healthcare system, as well as how much of an impact they could have on all sorts of other industries like food, alcohol, medical devices, and more. Another thing I'm looking out for in 2024 is more clarity on how public and private insurers will treat these drugs. They're very expensive, so and so far, coverage has been spotty. But starting next year, several more state Medicaid programs will cover obesity medicines. And with mounting data of their health benefits, private insurers will have to start offering up their own strategies for paying for them. These drugs are so revolutionary that it's going to take some time to fully understand how they'll fit into our lives. The hottest year on record. When 2023 started, the Pew Research Center found that climate change ranked 17th out of 21 national issues. A year's worth of hellish weather urged Americans to rethink their priorities. And this election year will show if we can rise to the moment. The climate news in 2023 the hottest year in recorded human history, just kept going from bad to worse. What's terrifying is that at the rate we're burning fossil fuels and pumping carbon into the atmosphere, we're eventually going to look back at 2023 as the good old days. We still have time to prevent a grim future of a planet so hot that much of it's too dangerous to inhabit, but it will take political will. More importantly, it will take money. How much money are we talking? Try $200 trillion between now and 2050. That's the low end of estimates of how much we need to invest in switching the global economy to clean energy and sustainable practices. Now, I know what you're thinking, $200 trillion is kind of a lot of money, but it's not nearly as much as what we'll lose if we don't invest that much. Climate disasters alone could shave 4% from global GDP every year. That's trillions of dollars right there. Throw in the spread of disease, climate refugees, wars over resources and more, and that $200 trillion looks like a bargain very quickly. Thanks to El Nino, 2024 will be even hotter than 2023. Polls show most of us want to stop that global heat wave from becoming the new normal. We have the power. What do you think it's going to take for people to actually use it?